technology a lot. If I were to take a caterpillar and run every scientific test that I can find, they'll come back and tell me, I know it looks like a caterpillar, but every test, no matter what you think, it's a butterfly. Because the caterpillar is a butterfly by nature, it will one day reflect its true nature. <coughs> the cross of Jesus Christ, when he said it is finished, he meant it. When you gave your life to Christ, you became a brand new creation. Instantly. It's not a work. The work was done. The DNA has been changed. You've been set. Your old nature died. You've been given a new nature, the divine nature. Now, it does you no good if you don't know it. It does you no good if you don't believe it. Because we walk by faith. So if you want to see the righteousness come out in your life, you have one of two options. You can try to live right, or you can believe you're righteous and let it manifest. Because the just shall live by faith. Not the just shall live by behaving modification. Here it is, here it is. Check this out. Check this out. If you believed you were a billionaire and you had unlimited resources, would I ever need to tell you, don't steal? No. Well, hopefully not. Some billionaires steal, apparently. <laughs> No, but hopefully your person in their right mind would not steal. That's my bad. By faith in your billionaire being rich and having resources, I wouldn't need to tell you not to steal. Check this. If you believe you are a sinner saved by grace, what are you going to produce? No, you believe you're a sinner. Even though you're saved by grace, you still think this is who you are. You will sin by your faith. You will live a life of sin based on this is who I am. I'm just a sinner by faith. Your faith doesn't make it true. You go further. If you believe you are the righteousness of God in Christ, what can you produce? The righteousness of God. By faith. We were talking about this about. Yes, there is. We are called to live right. But there are two ways to do it. I can tell you live right, or I can tell you who you are. And your faith in who you are will produce an effort. That's, it. That's why it says the just shall live by faith. This is, this is a, I'll share a quick story to kind of help illustrate this point. The Lord showed me a dream when I was, I was still working through a lot of this stuff. And I was looking at this field, and they had these, these like small trees that were now growing. And one by one, these men would come up to the trees, and they would grab the leaves, and start to pull on the leaves and be, stop sinning! And they'll go to the next one. Be holy! And they go to the next one. Be righteous! And I'm looking just like, what in blazes is going on? But then they're in the same dream. One man came up and he removed the stones that were around the plant that kept it from reaching down and drawing from the water that was below. And that tree just started. And he, then he walked off. And that tree began to grow. In fact, in the dream, it grew so big it consumed the other trees. I said, Father, what is that? He said, those are the lives of believers. And the men you see there are the leaders that they have. They're trying to clip the leaves of behavior rather than feeding the root, which is oh. the seed of Jesus Christ. That's good. That's good. And then he told me, he said, the stones are guilt, shame, and condemnation that keep my people from coming to me. Mm. I said, that's my message. If you want your clothes to be clean, do you want it as close to the bleach as possible or far away? You want it in the bleach? But if I come to God and I think, you know, I, I, I don't know if I'm right, you know, I, I did this nonsense last night, and, ah, no, nah, no, nah, not today. You don't want to get close to him. But when the Father responds, my son, you're forgiven. You've been justified, I don't see it. Come on. Would you come? That is the goodness of God that leads to repentance. Now you don't want to run from him. It's like, wow, this is amazing love. I know I don't deserve it. 
the only way that we can come boldly to his presence in his faithful, in his blood. Knowing what the blood has done, that's the only way we can have boldness to approach the Father, which is in the bleach that will clean up your life. The Bible does say that we've been made the righteousness of God. He said, by one man's sin, many were made sinners. But, but by the obedience of one, many shall be made righteous. How many were made sinners by Adam's sin? All. So how many were made righteous by Jesus' obedience? All of us. No, it doesn't do you any good if you don't believe it. You must believe it. Right? It is a free gift for all men, but you must believe it. I have to keep adding that in. You get to make it to prove. I don't like the word approve, but I'll use it. That's, that's when it becomes yours. And this is the faith that pleases God. It's like, okay, I was addicted for, to porn for many years and you know, spay all the other stuff. And anybody who has that kind of daily addiction knows the guilt, the shame, and condemnation. And I tried everything to stop. Right. And the more guilty I felt, the more I wanted to do it because I was like the only person who could get pleasure. Come on. Like escape. But when I started to understand these truths, <coughs> it was it was radical. And I'd be in church and I'd raise my hands and be like, yes, I'm the righteousness of God and Jesus and I'm praising God. And it doesn't take faith to believe that I'm the righteousness of God when I'm in church and I'm doing that. But when it's just watch porn, and there's no evidence that I'm really righteous, I would have to, that's when I need faith. And I'd stand there and be like, Father, I know what I just did, man. And, and nothing in me is, looks clean right now. But I believe on your word that says I am righteous, and by faith I confess on the righteousness of God. And I hear the Father say, My child, you've never pleased me so much. You're trusting me. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The word there in the Greek is pistos, it means trust. The Christian life is not about trying to change your behavior, it's about realizing you can change. You're not trying to get something from God that He's already given you everything. That's right. You'll never hear us speak about anointings, mantles, impartations, because I can't give you what you already have. You have Jesus. What could I add to Jesus? What could I add to the Holy Spirit? But yes, we have gifts in different areas of grace, and we'll, we'll get to that. But if what I do and what we do in these things is because of a special gift, if I have the gift and you don't, you can't do it. But if what I have and what I do is because of Jesus in me, the Christ in me, the hope of glory, and he's the same Jesus in you, guess what? All things are possible. That's crazy. So the last point on, on the blood is you know, condemnation. Condemnation says you deserve to be punished. Right? So those are the three. Guilt, shame, and condemnation. Guilt says you've done something wrong. Shame says there's something wrong with you. And condemnation says you deserve to be punished. And guys, we all know that Jesus was punished and condemned that we would not be condemned. Ever. There is therefore no condemnation in Christ, and I will add to it, not even your own. You're not allowed to condemn yourself, guys. And we put that on ourselves. God is not condemning us. But we put it on ourselves. And by our own condemnation, we draw far from the world. And that's why that verse is there saying, no condemnation, none. And again, that's the goodness of God. Is this making sense to people then? Is, is this good? So a little more on the new creation, because this is where we operate out of. The Bible says that we, those who are joined to the Lord are one spirit with Christ. I know there are a lot of worship songs out there. I would just draw me near to you, Father. And he's kind of like, dude. <laughs> We are one. <laughs> I know again, I'm not, I love worship songs, but religion is all about separation. They always find excuses for separation. You know, like, God is up there and I'm down here, I'm a worm, and I've got to scale these steps to reach God. Every religion does that. Christianity is the reverse, and we know it. it's about God coming to us and making us a habitation. So we're one spirit with God. Our sin nature has been crucified. He's given us a brand new heart. You know Jeremiah, isn't it? Jeremiah it says that the heart is wicked and deceitful above all things. In Ezekiel it says the exact opposite. 
This is part of the new covenant. He said, I will take out the heart of stone and I'll put in the heart of flesh. And how do we know that's believers? Because the very next line says, I will put my spirit in them. That was impossible under the old covenant. 